Welcome to the Puzzle of Us, where we are helping you pick up the broken pieces of life, love, and marriage and help you to feel whole again. I'm your host, Chelsea Peterson, owner and clinical director of Cash Valley Counseling, and I have over 15 years of experience working with individuals, couples, and families as a marriage and family therapist, and I want to bring some of this expertise to you. So I hope you enjoy this episode where we're going to be talking about meditation and mindfulness and how that can help decrease your anxiety. It's a great practice to get into regardless of whether or not you're struggling with anxiety, but as you heard in previous episodes that every single one of us is going to experience some anxiety at some point in our lives. And so these practices are fantastic to put into your wheelhouse, put into your toolbox so that when you need them, they can they can be there for you and you can rely on them to help make you a better person to help you manage your anxiety um, and decrease decrease anxiety because it is no fun when you're in the middle of it. So I want to start off by giving you a little bit of background about uh, mindfulness and meditation. I am by no means an expert in this whatsoever, um, but mindfulness really is the practice the practice of just being mindful or being aware of particularly body sensations um, or what's happening in your in your body. It doesn't necessarily have to be your body, but your brain is part of that as well. So it can be thoughts, but just being aware of what is happening, how my body and thoughts and mind and emotions and physical responses are happening to the world around me. Um, just being aware of it. Origins date back over 4,000 years to Hinduism. Um, and most widely known for their practices are the, the Buddhist practice, right? You think of, of meditation and you think of those cute little monks sitting in monasteries and sitting there for hours on end. And I had uh, the, ex the opportunity to go to Thailand where I saw this firsthand and we were at a museum, kind of a temple museum thing for hours and the same monk was sitting in the same position and it's just Crazy to me that they can just shut everything down and just be that way. It's a it's an incredibly powerful, very healthy um, mindset to practice. Um, again, we are not asking that you do that 24/7 or anything like that, or to the to the level of Buddhism um, or becoming a monk. But in increasing these practices in your in your daily lives, even just a little bit, can really help to relieve some anxiety. So I, I want to talk a little bit about the difference between meditation and mindfulness because sometimes those things can be used interchangeably and they are very similar, um, but they are different. Mindfulness is, it is kind of an active process where you are bringing your, yourself, your body, your mind into awareness. So you are actually, it's kind of an active thing. Um, people think about well, I'm just my, I'm just meditating or I'm just going off and I'm just not thinking about anything. But mindfulness is actually the exact opposite. We want to bring our mind, mind and thoughts and awareness to what is actually happening. And so being mindful, being aware, it's, it's an active process. It requires some effort um, and even watching of our thoughts. Meditation is the opposite, where it's transcending the mind, um, where it's you don't really want to use your mind. You want it to be a very passive, very, very, very little effort should be happening in when you are really mindful or when you're really meditating. Um, you really are letting go of those thoughts. We're not being judgmental of ourselves. We're not being judgmental of our thoughts. We're just not thinking. Um, and that's what meditation is. That's kind of a very brief description. People who practice this more often and have it uh, solidified it may have differences of opinions with that, but that's a very layman's understanding of differences between meditation and mindfulness. So when you do, when you are um, practicing meditation, um, sorry, first we're going to talk about mindfulness. And, and really, both of these practices, whether it be mindful or meditation, both are incredibly helpful in managing anxiety, right? Anxiety is that kind of intrusive thoughts, those um, thoughts we can't get rid of, those thoughts that just keep coming up and they increase our 
nervous system, they increase our adrenaline, our cortisol, everything, our nervous system gets ramped up and it responds. And if we can be mindful and we can be in a meditative state, that essentially overrides our nervous system and it tells our central nervous system that we can be calm, that we can, that we are safe, that um, we can kind of slow things down a little bit. It's an incredibly helpful practice. So it, both mindfulness and meditation have huge benefits when it comes to managing your anxiety. Um, so meditation, there are a couple different types of meditation that I want to briefly talk about. One is a focused meditation, one is a open monitoring meditation, and one is a loving kindness meditation. There are other meditations that are out there, but those are, I think, probably three of the most common. And a focused meditation is you're focused on one specific thing. So that focus might be um, on the staying present in the moment or slowing down intrusive thoughts, um, slowing down inner dialogue, paying attention to what inner dialogue is even happening in my in myself. Um, that is a very focused meditation. There's also a, a part of that that is mindful, right? Bringing awareness, that's that, that focus part is really very similar and the most similar to being mindful. Open monitoring is focus on everything that's being experienced. So what's going on in the world around me? Oh, the sun is shining. Oh, I hear a trees rustling in the leaves. I hear, I feel the wind on my face. I feel this, it's kind of this openness to what, to all the sensory experiences and the world around me that's being experienced. Um, it can be bodily sensations, it can be external stimuli, it can be my thoughts. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be just sensations either, but it's more of just taking on the whole world. Loving kindness is a meditation that focuses specifically on compassion, um, energy, complete positive regard for self and for others. Um, oftentimes if you attend a yoga class or you attend something like that, they will have a lot of um, kind of self-love um, or loving kindness meditation practices, particularly towards the end, right? Like, may I find peace, may I find, um, may I be whole, may I, I am loved, you know, those kind of self-affirming affirmations that are typically in a yoga class. Um, spoken of at the end. Um, you can do hard things. Those sort of things can be part of that loving kindness. Again, think conditional, unconditional positive regard for self and that practice where you are bringing up those things, that positive self-affirmation, and you're letting yourself sit in the, the warmth of that, the positivity of that. You're letting yourself sort of take root in that for a brief moment and soaking up all the, the power and energy that comes from thinking those positive thoughts. So just again, various types of meditation. It doesn't have to be sitting quietly for hours on end. And um, I often get people who, when I ask, have you ever meditated? They're like, who has time for that, right? We are, all live incredibly busy lives. And the more you put small parts of mindfulness or meditation into practice, into your life, the better. There are tons of resources on YouTube that you could do a two minute, five minute, 15 minute. It doesn't matter if you have five minutes, if you have two minutes, if you have three minutes, a three min minute mindful, positive, loving kindness meditation. They're out there. They're on YouTube. Check them out. Use them. Um, YouTube is probably one of the biggest resources as far as free resources go until you can kind of get your own routine down of what's most helpful for me. YouTube is a fantastic resource for many, many meditations. A lot of them will have um, good, you know, nature scenes or things that are mostly comforting to people. Um, some of them will have some music in the background, some things that again, help calm that central nervous system. 
So it does not have to be one of the biggest misconceptions I think that I hear is that I don't have time for this. And I promise you, you do if you carve out five minutes before bed as you wake up um, as, as kids are down for naps. During your lunch is a great time. You know, everybody takes a lunch break. Everyone has a, a lunch hour. Everybody eats during those times. So um, taking five minutes of that and say, I'm going to purposefully put this time aside to be able to make this happen can be really, really helpful. Um, it, in doing that, again, our, when, we, when we are experiencing anxiety, anxiety often causes our central nervous to stay at an all-time high. And so it doesn't mean your anxiety is going to go away forever, but you're basically saying, okay, central nervous system, I know that you're freaking out. And I'm going to push pause on this for a minute, and I'm going to give myself a chance to sort of reset go back to normal, not have to have my heart racing and my palms sweaty and this pressure on my chest just for a moment. And the, the idea hopefully is that that moment over time spans into longer periods, right? Hours, hours turn into days, days turn into weeks. Um, because those, those mindfulness or the, those meditative practices really help override that central nervous system to say, hey, I got you. Hey, I'm here. You can still be worried about those things, but I don't have to be on high alert. Um, it's taking that into the overdrive and it's, it's incredibly, incredibly helpful practice. Um, it, it is really helpful in treating anxiety and has been shown. So if you are, are doubting me at all, give yourself a time frame, a week. Um, give yourself, commit, commit to yourself for even doing this for five, six days. Um, you know, I think it, it, they say 30 days, make, it takes 30 days to create a habit. So if you're really committed to this, definitely take the 30 days to create a habit. But if you are skeptical of this, take even just five days and be reflective of how I, how I'm feeling before I start this practice. And then start something very small for five minutes a day, three minutes a day. Who doesn't have three minutes in their day while you're driving? I mean, being careful when you're driving to not be too mindful that you completely, you know, take someone out. Um, we, I don't want that. <laughs> um, but making sure that you're doing it in a safe place, right? Maybe you uh, pull off the road for five minutes before I go home, I'm down the road in a neighborhood, and I pull in for five minutes so that... I can practice one of these uh, meditative practices before I go home to chaos and family and whatever else might be there. Making sure that you are prioritizing that even just a little bit can be incredibly helpful in managing your anxiety. So uh, some other practical times that you can very easily today start putting this to practice is just mindful breathing. Just notice how is it to breathe? when I take a big deep breath in through my nose and out through my chest or out through my mouth, what happens to my chest? What happens to my body? What happens to the noise in my head? What happens to the muscles in the bottom of my toes? Just being mindful of that, right? Just noticing your breath doesn't necessarily have to be, okay, take a big deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Just breathe normal. What's that like? As I breathe normal, how are my fingers, how are my lungs feeling? How is my heart feeling? What's my gut telling me? Just being mindful of what that's like. As I'm slowing down, Pushing pause. Very helpful. Another application that is we all eat. Another way that you can do this today, put this to practice, is uh, focus on your your eating. What's it like to put this nut in my mouth? What does that nut feel like on my tongue? How's my tongue responding? What is my spit gland doing? Where am I? What what is my what is my tongue doing? How's my tongue and mouth changing as I chew on this, as I suck on this, as I 
as these changes in my mouth. Just noticing, maybe noticing uh, what is it like as it swallows and it goes down my esophagus. And I even picture it going down into my stomach. And then from my stomach, can I picture those nutrients getting pulled apart and sent to all those places that it needs to go, really fueling my brain and my body in a positive way. Right? Mindful eating can be incredibly helpful. It could be a way that you insert one of these uh, practices into your daily life right now without making any drastic major changes. Um, another practical application that you can do right now today is uh, social interaction. So just being mindful of what does it feel like being in this place with these people? What's happening inside my chest? What does this feel like? How is this for me? Just being mindful of that. Um, it, it, it being mindful of when those changes occur for you of I usually don't mind this and today it feels hard. Why does it feel hard? Noting those changes, being able to not be judgmental, but just be curious about what is causing those changes. What is um, maybe eliciting the response that it is? Again, in a non-judgmental way, being open with all that arises, right? Being open with all that comes for you of just noticing, okay? Um, some practical applications for, those are practical applications for mindfulness, practical applications for meditation. Um, one of my favorite things about uh, a focused meditation that's really simple for beginners to do is just simply notice as you take a moment. I like to, I like to breathe a little bit to get myself in a, in a mindset and I'm to the point now that when I do this. I do this often enough that when I take a big deep breath in through my nose and out through my mouth, I can feel my body like, oh yeah, settling into like, okay, here we go. I get to let go of all that central nervous system for a minute and I just get to just be. And, <clears throat> and so if you can do that and get your place self to that place, so usually it starts with breathing, um, and, and getting yourself into that space. And, and with the meditation, um, something very, very focused, very just being present in this moment. What does it feel like to be in this moment right here? What do I hear? I like to go through a very simple meditation of what is it like? What are my body, bodily sensations? What am I experiencing? Do I feel the sun on my face? Do I feel the light around me? Do I feel, do I hear the wind? Do I hear traffic? Do I hear silence? What do I hear? So I go through five senses, right? What do I see? What do I hear? What do I smell? What do I feel? What do I taste? Right? And I go through those. And as I go through those, just feel what it's like for your body to kind of notice those in those moments. Let yourself be in that meditative state. Um, it's it's a, one of the things that I find it most difficult for people is that they do this and it feels good, but then they fail to put in a kind of the routine in place. And so find a time that feels right for you. It might be before bed. It might be before I even get out of bed in the morning, I'm going to set my alarm for five minutes before I need to go or, you know, the seven minute snooze button or whatever it is. And I am going to set my alarm and I'm going to, to do a meditation or a mindfulness just before I get out of bed, right? As I'm waking up in the morning, can I be mindful or can I be in a meditative state of just what's it feel like today to be alive? What's it like to be in this moment? Noticing how it feels in your body, noticing the thoughts that are coming, you know, being mindful of what does it feel like as I take those first steps out of bed, right? Is that arthritis setting in? Is it cold? Is it warm? Is it hot? How does the carpet or the flooring feel on my feet? Right? 
as I stand up? How does each individual muscle feel as I put weight on them for the first time? Just being mindful of that. Putting in those consistent routine meditations can be the most helpful in helping you be successful in carving out time to make sure that you are doing this practice. Um, a lot of times there are uh, there's a lot of overlap between mindfulness and meditation, which is, as I started this, a, a big reason why things get kind of mixed and people call them simultaneously, they call them the same thing. Um, it doesn't it, it doesn't really matter, but it, it does matter to some people out there who, who really practice, practice meditation or really practice, practice mindfulness. Um, but what it matters to the layperson who's trying to put it into practice is that you're giving your central nervous system a break. You're pushing pause. You're able to say, Whew, I'm just noticing what's happening in my body right now happening and noticing what's happening in my thoughts right now. How does this feel for me? What does this feel like? How does it land on me? What's going on around me? Um, so many of us, I mean, I just think about the eating. How many of us sit down and it's eating and it's, you know, often eating as quick as we can because we're racing to the next thing and being mindful of that food, being mindful of what we're taking into our body. Not necessarily that it has to be the most nutritious thing, but being grateful that we have food to take in, that we have uh, a, a sense that we can, you know, get nutrition from this um, can be really, really helpful. Again, mindfulness and meditation, it, either way, it's the, that pausing that central nervous system, giving your central nervous system a break which is really pausing the anxiety, you know, pausing the intrusive thoughts. And it's incredibly helpful. There's tons of research out there on how incredibly powerful those things can be for managing uh, anxiety specifically. Um, if you are interested, we do have a breathing for anxiety yoga type course that is online that you can purchase from Cash Valley Counseling. Um, that was done by a yoga instructor that used to work for Cash Valley Counseling and she put it together for us. It's a fantastic way to just incorporate some of those simple practices into your life um, with body movement, a little bit of exercise, but not too terribly stren strenuous and really helped focus on that breath. Um, again, there's lots of things out there. YouTube is a fantastic resource for both mindfulness and meditation resources and uh, being able to just really be truly present in your life, more fully present, more aware, um, and instead of ruled by all the things that are happening to you in your life. Um, it, I, I, it's so helpful, I've seen it be so helpful for so many of my clients as well as myself and in practice with my, in my own life as well as, as clients, many clients' lives. So check out what resources speak to you. Um, there's lots of research, different resources out there. And again, mindfulness and meditation can be wildly helpful in managing your anxiety. So hopefully that gave you some information of where to start and how to manage your anxiety a little bit better using mindfulness and meditation. I've been your host, Chelsea Peterson from The Puzzle of Us. Please check us out. Please subscribe and look forward to seeing you next week.